Today, we're not sauteing any shrimp, which is a pretty remarkable statement when you consider that we're about to make shrimp scampi. Because if you look up this recipe in nearly any cookbook, you'll find the same set of instructions. Saute some shrimp, then make a quick garlic and butter sauce. But that will net you this, which is overcooked shrimp, a broken sauce that's greasy on top and has an overpowering garlic flavor. But today, Ella's gonna show us a better way to make this classic dish. Yes, we made 50 pounds of shrimp. You cooked 50 pounds of shrimp to yes. get this recipe right. Until we got it right. Are you crazy? A little, <laughs> a little. First of all, we have to start with the right kind of shrimp. We have here one and a half pound of shrimp, and this is enough to feed about four people. We use jumbo shrimp. The big guys. The big guys, mostly because it's less shrimp to peel. We're gonna start from the bottom here on the swimming legs. Mm -hmm. And it's always better to start peeling from the bottom to the top. That's how we reach success. Always <laughs> starting from the bottom, right? Okay. So we're saving these shells too, by the way. Yeah, I noticed that. So it's always best to make sure that when you're buying shrimp, that you buy shrimp that is not treated with added salt or preservatives. That's very important. We've reached my favorite part of this recipe. All right. It's what I call the three, two, one step. So we're gonna brine the shrimp in three tablespoons salt, two tablespoons sugar, into one quart of water. <laughs> three, two, one. So I'm gonna whisk just to dissolve. And so this brine is going to preserve the flavor of the shrimp, and the sugar in it is gonna add to the shrimp's natural sweetness. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna add this shrimp in here. Now do we have to brine the shrimp for a long time? No, not at all. We're only gonna brine it for about 15 minutes in the fridge, covered. Julie, our shrimp is out of the brine. Look at that. We're gonna just give it a few pats to dry it off. I'm gonna set it aside. We've also started one tablespoon of oil in our pan on high heat, just so the oil is shimmering. We're gonna use our shrimp shells to create a stock. We're doing this because shrimp itself, cooked in such a short time, does not lend a lot of flavor to the dish. So we're gonna create that flavor. We want the shrimp shells to start spotting a little. We see some white spots, we oh, see yeah. some brown spots happening there. When you start to see that happening prominently in the pan, we know we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, I see it's predominantly brown in that pan, so we're gonna remove it from the heat and we're gonna start to create the base for our stock. We have one cup of white wine here. And add four sprigs of thyme. And now I see why you did that off the heat. So you didn't yes. catch fire in the whole skillet. Absolutely, I like my eyelashes. <laughs> All right, Julie, we're gonna return this to the heat. And we're gonna turn it back on so it can simmer. So we've tested this shrimp stock at five minutes and up to 30 minutes, and we found that five minutes is all the time that we need to get these shrimp shells to give us all the flavor they have. The fact that you only need to simmer the shrimp stock for five minutes is pretty interesting when you consider that other types of stocks, take chicken stock for example, require hours of simmering time in order to extract all the flavor from the bones. Now the reason for this is because of their flavor compounds. The flavors in chicken broth are stable. They're not gonna go anywhere during that long cooking time. The flavor compounds in shrimp, however, are volatile and they're eager to escape out of the pan. So limiting the simmering time in the shrimp stock to just five minutes means that more of the shrimp flavor stays in the pan. Julia, it's been five minutes. It's time for us to pour our stock out. We're gonna strain it here. Oh, and I'm gonna press these shells because we got liquid gold in there. Mm, that is liquid gold, isn't it? Out. It all really it. has a very strong shrimp aroma. All right, so the next step to building the base of our scampi sauce is starting with my favorite ingredient, garlic. Oh, mine too. I'm gonna slice this garlic because minced garlic has a tendency to give our sauce a gritty taste. Mm -hmm. Slicing is more mild because it creates less surface area exposed. So you can control the flavor of your garlic with your knife. So that looks like a lot of garlic. Now, how much garlic is that? It is a lot of garlic. It's actually eight cloves of garlic, but because we're slicing instead of mincing, it gives us an opportunity to bump up that garlic flavor. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe out the skillet. I'm not taking it all away, but just the muckety-muck. We're gonna heat one tablespoon of oil over medium-high heat. We know the pan is ready when the oil starts to shimmer. Let's go in with our eight cloves of garlic. Oh, that is one of my all-time favorite smells when the garlic just hits the pan and you get that initial waft. Oh yeah. So we're gonna add half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Mmm, a little heat. A little heat. So I'm just gonna give this a little stir to make sure that all the cloves are covered in oil, three to five minutes, and until the garlic starts to brown around the edges. 
All right, Julia, this is our liquid gold, mm -hmm. our shrimp stock. So just so you know, that was about two thirds cup of stock we produced there. That smells amazing. You know, the smell is getting better and better because before it was a nice, simple shrimp aroma. Now it's garlic and shrimp and a little bit of spice. So we're gonna go in with our shrimp. And this is poaching. You know, as we decided we weren't sauteing, we're gonna poach this shrimp because it's gonna retain the moisture in the shrimp and we're gonna get all the flavors from this great stock we made. Now this is kind of a big deal because as I mentioned earlier, you look up any recipe for shrimp scampi and it's just sauteed, which turns them dry and rubbery. But by poaching the shrimp, you're actually keeping them moist so they'll have some good texture. We have shrimp control. <laughs> the shrimp are under control. All right, so we're gonna cook this shrimp for about five minutes. We're gonna cover it with the lid so that they cook in unison, and we'll come back and visit it and stir it a couple of times. <laughs> Julia, I believe our shrimp is ready, Ooh. but how can we tell? <laughs> the first thing is to check your shrimp and see if it's opaque. Once it's opaque in color, we know we're ready. I'm gonna remove the shrimp from the pan. We're gonna start our scampi sauce. <laughs> we want the sauce to be silky and emulsified. So we're gonna do that by adding three tablespoons of lemon juice to a mere teaspoon of cornstarch. Now we've tested flour, we tested pectin, we tested gelatin, and we found that just this one teaspoon of cornstarch with this lemon juice works like magic. So we're gonna return our sauce to a medium heat. We're gonna add our binder. We're gonna let this cook for about a minute, and during that time, we should start to see the sauce thickening. So we've taken this pan off the heat and we're gonna add four tablespoons of cold butter. Mm, I was wondering when the butter was gonna come into the sauce. Oh yeah, we're gonna whisk that in and we're also gonna add a tablespoon of chopped parsley. And thanks to that cornstarch, the butter in the sauce is gonna stay nicely emulsified and not separate out into that greasy layer. That sauce went from looking fairly terrible to pretty terrific in about a minute. We're ready to add the shrimp. Oh, that looks amazing. It's not your everyday shrimp scampi here. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna make me wait any longer or can we taste this? No, I think we can taste oh, it. Oh, good. So do you want a lot of shrimp or a little bit of shrimp? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I'll give you a lot I mean, of shrimp. I mean, what are you gonna have? I'm gonna have a lot of shrimp. <laughs> and do not be shy with the sauce. I will not at all. So I'm gonna finish this off with a nice bright mm. spray of lemon. If it tastes as good as it looks, we're home. Mmm, mmm. Oh boy. These shrimp are so tender. They're not at all rubbery. In fact, they almost have a silky consistency. Well, we had a lot of shrimp control, so I think we <laughs> can pat ourselves on the back for that. And that sauce has layers of flavor with the shrimp, a little kick at the end, and that smooth garlic flavor that's not at all gritty. Not at all. And it's not over oily, mm -hmm. you know? Just nice and evenly balanced. For the ultimate shrimp scampi, we used one and a half pounds of untreated jumbo shrimp and we didn't saute them. Instead, we sauteed their shells before making a quick five minute shrimp broth. And to bring that harsh garlic flavor under control, we sliced, not minced the cloves and sauteed them along with a few other aromatics before building the sauce. Finally, we poached the shrimp right in the sauce so that they cooked through evenly and took on a tender, supple texture. There you have it, from the test kitchen to your kitchen, the ultimate recipe for shrimp scampi. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.